four partners in the hospital. Come on, Alex, you're a good cop. By the way, who's my new partner? We call him Yo-Yo. He weighs 427 pounds. He's a completely mobile computer, specially programmed for police work. Is he indestructible? We think so. Send in Holmes. You're not going to tell them? In my book, you got to make yourself a good cop. That's what I put in my report. <laughs> I hate going without a shave in the morning. I certainly do appreciate this, Yo-Yo. Why are we stopping here? Well, you overslept and you haven't had breakfast. I thought you might want a donut and some coffee. Thanks, I'll be right back. Good morning. What do you have? Uh, give me a cup of coffee. And uh, you got a diet donut? A what? No, no, no. Just give me one of those and a cup of coffee. Here we go. That's, uh, 31 cents, please. Don't you have anything smaller than a 20? Sorry. Well, I, uh, I haven't got change. I'll have to get it in the back. Hello, operator? Let me have the police, quick. Police department, this is McDougal's Donut Shop. You're on violent. Somebody just passed me a bogus $20 bill. Big fella. Shefty looking. <laughs> I'll try to stall him. Yeah, he's waiting for his change. Hurry, please. All units in the vicinity. See the man at 4410 Vineland. Forgery suspect there now. Alex! Hey, Alex! Hang on to my change. I'll be right back. Forgery suspect at 4410 Vineland. Vineland? We're on Vineland. 4410 would be... Police! Boy, you're fast. You got him! I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. A trained, professional police officer tries to pass a phony bill. That's almost as stupid as a cop being held up in the bank. I knew you'd bring that up sooner or later again, Harry. Can I have it back? You know this has to be confiscated. It's evidence. I'm out 20 bucks. Can you at least remember where you got it? Well, I cashed my check yesterday. Paid some bills. I must have gone to a dozen different places. What do I tell the chief? Do you have an answer? Well, say something. Could you loan me 20, Harry? <laughs> I'm busted. I'll bust you right back onto the beat if you don't catch this forger. All right. Here. And remember, I want this back as soon as you get paid. You can have it back right now. Why? It's a phony. Not funny, Alex. Maybe I'm not, but this 20 is. You don't know what you're talking about. It's confetti already. Can you remember where you got it? Well, I cashed my check yesterday. I paid a lot of bills. Last night. Last night? A card game. Somebody slipped it to you in a card game? Yeah. Who? The chief. <laughs> Gotta go, Alex. <laughs> 
Like always. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, you know, you wouldn't happen to have 20 bucks till payday, would you? I don't have any money, Alex. You broke, too? No, I'm not broke. I'm functioning perfectly. No, you're being too literal. Yeah. Broke is just a figure of speech. It means you spent all your money. Thanks, Alex. I'll make a note of that. You know, if I had any money, I'd give it to you. Here. What's this? Oh, I found a dime. Uh, that's the new operations manual on forms and procedures. Captain wants you to read it when you get a chance. Thanks, Alex. I enjoyed it very much. It took you two seconds to read a 300-page report? Well, I'm a little out of practice. At that rate, you'd have to belong to the Book of the Minute Club. The Book of the... You don't know, but never mind. Yes, Inspector, he's here. Inspector Haley, Treasury Department. Uh, th thank you for calling back, Inspector. How are you, sir? Uh, we'd like you to help us identify a forger. Meet you in the Federal Building in 20 minutes. Thank you, sir. Come on, Yo-Yo. Alex, I've got to finish this report. Finish it later. But, Alex... Knock it off. Knock it off? Yes. No, no, Yo-Yo. <laughs> Knock it off is a figure of speech. You're being too literal again. Come on, Doctor. Max, we're going to the Federal Building. Treasury. Can you spare 20? Why? Are they that short? <laughs> Little old me. When do I get it back? Can you wait till payday? What are my options? Thanks. OK. Catch you later. Catch you later? That's a figure of speech, isn't it, Alex? It means she'll see you later. Very good. Now, let's split. <laughs> figure of speech. <laughs> I had missed you. I had to step out for a minute. Inspector Haley, this is my partner, Gregory Yoyanovich. How do you do, sir? We certainly appreciate your help. I'm on a very tight schedule. I can only give you a few minutes. That's all we'll need. Wait a minute. Where, where is he going? I don't know. I'll try to find out. Hey, Yo-Yo, whatever it is you forgot, forget it. The inspector's waiting for us. Alex, I didn't forget anything. The electric eye in that door is messing with my circuits. I thought you went to the lab and Dr. Babcock fixed that. He tried, but obviously it didn't work. What'd he do? He gave me a shot for it. A shot? What kind of a shot? He hit me with a wrench. <laughs> Man, we don't have much time. Right, sir. We're with you all the way. Wait, now where is he going? What did you say to him, sir? <laughs> Nothing. Are you sure? He's very sensitive. I'll try to talk him into coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. I'll get you through. Hang on to me. Here we are, Inspector. But there's one thing we want to talk over first. Yo-Yo, if you don't stop behaving like this, he's going to put two and two together and figure out that you're not a... A person. I didn't say that. Alex, why don't you just kick me? Kick you? What for? That's what people do when their machines break down. Kick me. Yo-Yo, you're a yo-yo. If you want to be thought of as a person, you've got to stop being so sensitive. Man! What are we going to do? I have an idea, Alex. I don't know. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Aren't you coming, Inspector? The craftsmanship is phenomenal. This is the work of a master forger. I'm telling you, this, this could fool a professional, a police officer. I doubt it. The quality of the paper is excellent. The printing is exceptionally good. Inspector, do you think you'll be able to help us identify the forger? Well, we'll sure give it every try. And uh, so you can give yourself some background. The Treasury Department has compiled a rather extensive report on forgery. Read it at your leisure. Thank you. Now, if I had to guess... I enjoyed it very much. Don't you want to read it? I did. When? Recently. It's impossible. This report just came out. He read a report earlier. The earlier report was not distributed. It was an earlier, earlier report that came out earlier. There was no earlier, earlier report. Maybe it was a later, earlier report. Where did you get him? 23rd Precinct. He transferred. 23rd Precinct, huh? Uh, what division? The Bunko Squad. The Bunko Squad? The Bunko Squad. That's right. When did you join them? 
the Bunko Squad. Why does he keep saying the Bunko Squad? Saying what? Did you know Lieutenant Harrison of the Bunko Squad? Yeah, he was in command of the... But never had the pleasure. Uh, Inspector, I, uh, you were saying about the forager, if you had to take a guess? Uh, yeah, I was saying that if I had to guess, uh, I would say this bill is the work of Carl Schillerman. Carl Schillerman? Better known as the... as the... The Dutchman. The Dutchman? Yeah, I, but I thought he went straight when he got paroled last year. Uh, that's the impression we were under, but uh, after seeing this bill, I'm not so sure. Would you happen to know where we could locate him? No. Well, you can get that information at the Bunko Squad. The Bunko Squad? Yeah. All right, never mind. We'll find him ourselves. Come on, we don't want to keep the man waiting. Fantastic. Will you look at all the wonderful things that they make out of plastic? I wonder what Schillerman is doing working in a plastics factory. Maybe that lady can tell us where he works. Alex, look at this. How do they get all those little coins in the plastic? Well, they probably got some kind of a mold, see, and then they... The plastic is in a liquid. We're not here for a sightseeing tour, y'all. Come on, let's talk to that lady. Alex, watch out. Alex, watch out. <laughs> Miss is the owner. Miss? Oh, Miss? Plastic, it's soundproof. Miss? <laughs> What do you want? Is the owner around? Mr. Peerless is out back. You go down that aisle, turn right, make a sharp left. He's either in furniture or potty seats. <laughs> Mr. Peerless? Uh, just a minute. Yes, the police officer. Uh, I don't give discounts. We want to ask a few questions about one of your employees, Mr. Carl Schillerman. Uh, Albert, go get some more cans of spray. I don't think Albert should hear about Carl. They work together. How long has Carl Schillerman been in your employ? Over a year. Why? Is he here every day? Regular as clockwork. Punctual, too. Works hard, 10, 12 hours a day. Wish I had more like him. Yeah. There's Carl. You want to talk to him? Not right now. If we do, we'll be in touch. Alex. I know. I know. Inspector could be wrong. If the Dutchman's printing money, they're certainly not going to be working 10, 12 hours a day for it. Check. Alex, you don't have any money. I borrowed $20 from Maxine, don't you remember? You know what I think? I think we better put a tail on the Dutchman anyway, just to be safe. I think he's clean. OK. But where do we go from here? Police. Listen, I got some guys here trying to pass a phony 20. I cashed my check yesterday. I paid a lot of my bills. Oh, I must have gone to a dozen different places. Okay, okay. When the chief gets here, we'll try to find some... Afternoon, Sepper. Good afternoon, chief. You know Officer Moon, Sergeant Holmes, and this is our new man, Sergeant Yoyanovich. Yoyanovich, do you have a brother who's an inspector? No, sir. Where are you from? The 23rd Precinct. What division? The Bunko Squad. <laughs> Captain, I'm sure Sergeant Yoyanovich is perfectly capable of answering for himself. So you were with the Bunko Squad? Yes, the Bunko Squad. <laughs> sir? Chief, I know how very limited your time must be. Do you have any idea where you might have picked up that counterfeit 20? Well, let's see. 
I uh, cashed my check yesterday, paid my bills. Must have gone to a dozen different places. Excuse me, sir, but why don't you and Officer Moon and Sergeant Holmes make a list of everywhere you went yesterday and see if there's one place in common? Good idea, Yoyanovich. <laughs> well, let's see. I did stop at the Star Price supermarket around the corner. Oh, I was there, too. That's good. Not me. <laughs> what about the holiday cleaners across the street? Almost everyone on the force uses that. You're right. I picked up my uniform there yesterday. I picked up my cleaning there yesterday, too. You use the holiday cleaners, too, don't you? All the time. Good. That's it. Except for yesterday. <laughs> oh, Captain, I did go to Pierre's beauty shop yesterday during my lunch hour. Maxine, beauty shops are for... I was there yesterday, too. <laughs> to pick up my wife. Well, that's just a coincidence. I'm sure Sergeant Holmes wasn't at Pierre's beauty shop yesterday. Absolutely not. My appointment isn't until Wednesday. <laughs> what? Well, Pierre Olson, he's a former cop. He gives me a trim for old time's sake. What about drug stores or bookstores? Gas stations, record stores. Records, records. I bought some stereo speakers at McPhee's Electronics yesterday. I was in McPhee's yesterday, too. So was I. That's it? That's it! That's it! That's it? <laughs> This is my partner, Detective Yoyanovich. Hi. We need some help. What happened to Sweden? I had it so clear a second ago. Uh, uh, what do you want to know? Uh, yesterday, Jerry, uh, Maxine and the chief and I came I in here. I can't think of this us. interference. It's like a steel building walked into the room. Yesterday, Jerry, you gave Maxine and the chief and me... I don't understand this. Uh, Sergeant, uh, would you get me a screwdriver from that shelf right over there? Uh, I had Sweden clear as a bell. Thank you. Hey, I got Sweden. No, I don't. It's gone now. Uh, I'm going to have to replace the tube. I'll be right back. It's uh, out here in front. Here we go. You're interfering with the set. You're causing static. Don't scare me. I know that. I'm also picking up all the shortwave signals. But as long as the radio is kept off, we're fine. Now, this little baby will take care of it. Did, did I turn the set off? Uh, no, Jerry, we did. We want to talk. Jerry, do you realize you're passing phony 20s? Me? Come on. Where would I get phony 20s? Jerry. But I just want to see if the new tube works. The chief came in here about 9.30 yesterday, right? Right. Yeah, I'm going to try Japan. Tokyo usually comes in beautifully. If the chief came in around 9.30, that means that the phony bills were Tomo Arigato. Oh, there's Tokyo. Perfect. Jerry, you're going to be a help. Help. Okay. Now, look, the way we got it figured, the phony bills were in your cash register before the chief came in. No, it couldn't have been. The chief was my first customer. Oh, wait a minute. A kid came in the night before last, just before I closed. Paid me in cash, all 20s. Do you know him? No, but I got his name and address on the sales slip. I think it was uh, Albert something. Let me get it. Albert, wasn't that the name of the kid who was working with the Dutchman at Bureau's? You want to see his picture? Yeah, you got one? <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of color. His, uh, his name is Albert uh, Rugolo. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. Thanks. Anytime. Sayonara. Yeah, Tokyo. you. Sayonara. Alex. Albert Rugolo isn't our counterfeiter. Why not? He paid for the stereo with counterfeit bills. He gave Jerry McPhee his name and address. A man who intentionally passes phony bills wouldn't want anyone to know who he was or where he lived. Albert gave his name and address because he didn't have any idea that the bills were counterfeit. I know that. <laughs> What we can figure is that the Dutchman has the bills. What we can't figure is how Albert got a hold of them. And if the Dutchman's back in business, why is he holding down a nine-to-five job? that 
the Dutchman and Albert haven't left yet. Oh, good. They're still working here. Alex, there is the reason the Dutchman works here. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> But let's hear your version first. <laughs> Those Lucite paperweights contain brand new $20 bills. You're right. I'm not finished, Alex. The Dutchman is substituting fake bills for the real ones. It's a perfect plan. <laughs> no one could ever spend those. <laughs> is that what you're thinking, Alex? Yes, precisely. The only question is, how did Albert get hold of fake bills? Well, we're going to find out the answer to that question right now. <laughs> Albert, bring me some plastics. Carl Schillerman, police officers. Yeah? We'd like to have a little talk with you. And Albert. And Albert. Me? What are you going to talk to me about? You bought a stereo the other day at McPhee's. Where'd you get the money? I, uh, I took it out of my, uh, my savings account. You're lying, Albert. The bank doesn't give out phony money. Those bills were counterfeit. You could get 20 years for counterfeiting, Albert. Hey, I didn't know that... He gave them to me. He gave them to me. You're a liar! He stole them from my wallet! You're both under arrest. <laughs> Wasting a bullet. He's crazy. Yo, yo, you could have been killed. Thank you, Alex. I apologize. What for? I can be scrapped. I can be short-circuited. I can be dented. But only a person can be killed. You really do think of me as a person, don't you, Alex? Well, uh, sure. Albert hadn't stolen the Dutchman's wallet. We never would have found out about those counterfeit bills. That's right, Alex. Ironic, isn't it? It took a thief to catch a thief. Oh, Max. Hi. I made some sandwiches. We're brown bagging it this week. Tuna fish? Get used to it. That's our diet till payday. Thanks, man. I love tuna fish. Good. Hey, Yuya, can I ask you a personal question? Why do you love tuna fish? What difference does it make what you eat? I can't even figure out why you eat. Well, I, I do it for them, Alex. It looks more natural. When you eat, where does the food go? I have a bill 
built-in trash compactor. Aren't they thorough? See the Happy Days gang on The Captain and Tennille tomorrow night at 6. Later tomorrow night, Robert Redford and Barbara Streisand star in The Way We Were. First time on television on the Sunday night movie at 9. Exciting news, Barbara Walters joins Harry Reasoner on the ABC Evening News beginning Monday at 5.30 here on ABC. Thank you.